Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the bill which seeks to borrow some money to help our people in St. Lucia. I say this, Mr. Speaker, when I followed in the footsteps of my fellow um, Minister of Commerce in organizing the business forum in the Babono constituency. This activity was attended by approximately 80 persons and we had a large turnout from the Babono constituency. Many of the small business persons did turn up for this activity. And we, we, we combine it with what we call the Funders Forum. Because many times we talk about some new initiatives, but we may not have the capacity to implement them. And in looking at business, we also look at where would we source the funding. But this bill here, Mr. Speaker, it, it touches on three of the departments under my watch. We spoke, of, we spoke of women, and we have noticed that the trend globally is if you need support, you have to respond to the source of funding. And many agencies will respond to programs that encourage women to participate. And that is where we speak of the issue of gender equality. Because in the past, what we have seen, most businesses are owned by men because the women used to stay home to take care of the domestic activities and taking care of the children. But now we have seen women branching out into the world of work and they have become very successful business people. So in that case, we are seeing that this opportunity opens the door for women to participate, and I applaud that. Gone are the days when um, persons who have graduated from school would sit home and send their application, seeking jobs, and waiting for a response from the employer. Now you have to create your own jobs because you will stay there for days and weeks and months and you may not even get a call acknowledging your application. As Minister with Responsibility for the Public Service, Mr. Speaker, I want you to note that we have over 3,000 applications in the public service, persons who are applying to be employed in government. But the government service, the public service, is almost at its neck. The last government did do some good padding just before they left, <laughs> where they put in some good friends, family, and, and so on. And as a result, there is very little breathing space to recruit new persons in the public service. So therefore, I see the opportunity for business as the alternative, especially for our young persons, to create their own employment. Mr. Speaker, this bill also speaks, when we speak of employment, to the Department of Labor. And recently I attended a meeting in Jamaica where we looked at the Canadian farm workers, where we sent St. Lucians to work in Canada. We had an incident where the women we sent to Canada returned prematurely because apparently they worked harder than they were expected and therefore the work had completed before the time the employer had stipulated. So the contract ended prematurely, and therefore most of them had to return home. So we want to see the Department of Labor expand employment, not just looking at the farm workers and other forms of employment in Canada, but we are also looking at employment locally as well as regionally in areas where we can get St. Lucians to, 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 to use their skills to work and to create livelihood for their family. Mr. Speaker, when persons have small businesses, it's actually creating an additional stream of income for them. There are people who are working sometimes for $600 a fortnight, sometimes $600 for the month. There is no way you can survive on this salary. And therefore you need multiple streams of income for you to be able to live 
decently. And I think the Prime Minister, in his wisdom, has set up a committee to look at what we call minimum wage. He has coined it livable wage. And that livable wage must be a wage at which somebody can survive on it. So that um, commission has been established. It is already in operation. And they are planning to deliver their first um, report in the few months so that we can see what sectors we are going to target. Many persons come, constituents come to my constituency, Mr. Speaker. And when I help them try to locate areas for employment, one of the things they do tell me, which I find is very strange, that they do not want to work in the hotels. And when I asked them why, they told me, well, the time, the time of work, they have their family. They don't want to leave the hotel that late or go and work that, that, that early because their children will suffer, their families will suffer. So sometimes they have to sacrifice work in order for them to protect their family. So if they can go into small business where they have their own business and they can manage it at their own time, they will be able to support their family as well as creating income and employment for them. Mr. Speaker, what I find good about um, this program and this bill is that the Ministry of Commerce has indicated that in setting up small businesses, they are going to take persons who do not have any business and help them, help them register. And when they set up the business, walk them through the process, not just giving them financial support, but ensuring that they become successful. They will help them in marketing, and this is what some of our people really need because they do not want to be dropped out there starting a business and then the business fails. And with this, I applaud the, the ministry. I support the essence and the genesis of this bill so that we can create employment for our people. The, the government has targeted three critical areas of employment. One, we see the community tourism, where government is putting financial support to help persons set up their business. We have noticed the youth economy is another area that targets the young persons, and now the small business under the Ministry of Commerce. So we have several avenues where persons can explore to set up their own businesses. And businesses are not things that you will say, if I am not working, then I can set up a business. You could be working and still have a business. And sometimes the business that you set up outgrows your normal form of employment. So you may have to give up your employment and run your business as a full-time affair. So with this, Mr. Speaker, I applaud this bill. I support the vision of the government and the Prime Minister with the the strong support from the Ministry of Commerce. My colleague minister is adamant, and I am convinced that she is going to make it work. And with the support of the public, we are going to see a large number of persons taking on this advantage of this offer so that we can put our young people in employment. We can put our single mothers, our single fathers, we can put the women in employment, and therefore this is going to stimulate the economy for greater growth in our country. With this, Mr. Speaker, I lend support to this bill.